So now I'm ready to begin to weave. I have my warps all tightened and I have my knots slid tight. If your knots are too high, you can actually move them down, retie them down lower and cut them off. So I'm working with sheets and they're kind of have a lot of strings attached. So make sure that when you tear your sheets, and it works best to tear them, make sure you go outside and do it because it's a real linty process. Now here we are six weeks into isolation and I can't get to the, th the uh, thrift shops to buy more sheets so I'm using fabric for my weft and I cut them into strips and try to use fabric that doesn't have a definite right or wrong because you can't get the right side to always show. So you're going to take your first piece and almost fold it in half, leave it a little difference on the ends because you don't want the joins in the same place. And you're going to use this first knotted uh, warp here as the first one. So you're going to go around that first warp and this is just like mohair cinch weaving. You're going to go around that one warp, then drop the one that's in the back, take the one in the front, and go around the next warp. Drop that, take the one in front, and go around the next warp. Drop that, take the next one, go around the next warp. And it's kind of hard to differentiate between the warps because they're all close together but after a few rows they begin to separate. So um, just bear with it for a couple rows and you can see how they separate. So always drop the one in the back and take the one in the front and go around the next warp. So you're going to work in this manner all the way across and when you run out of fabric you're going to splice on another one just the same way I showed you at the beginning and you want to make sure that you pack it down firmly. So pack it down firmly this way, but don't pull this way. Because if you pull this way, your weaving is going to go in. You'll have an hourglass shape. So pack it down, but don't pull sideways. So this is a nice relaxing process. And these rugs actually go fairly quickly and you can use just about anything. See I got a lot of these little straggly ends, just pull them off and they'll eventually you know, get rid of them. So just continue on across and then when you run out of your weft fabric, then you just splice on another one just the way I showed you. So you take your end and go through the slit, find the other end of your fabric, and run it through that hole. That's one thing about sheets is you always have nice long fabric pieces. So then you have your nice little join. And you also have a nice long piece to deal with. This is ready for another piece too, so. I'll add on a piece. Some people like to roll these up and put a rubber band around them. It makes it a little bit easier. Some people tie little knots around it, but like the mohair cinches, the, the shorter they get, the easier they are to work with. And then when you get over here to the other end, again you want to make sure that both of your wefts go around that outside warp. So the one that's in back comes forward, 
and then when it's forward, it goes all the way around that outside warp, so that both of them are going around that outside warp. And then now, make sure you pack it down firmly. So now I can either go again, drop this and go over it, or I can go under it. So if you go under it, they'll all be angled in the same direction. If you go over it, they're going to be angled in opposite directions. I know it doesn't look like much of an angle, but there is an angle to it. So depending on how you want it, if you want it to angle all in the same direction, go under when you go right to left. If you want it to be herringbone, go over it again like you were go from left to right, go the same way from right to left. Now, if you go in the same direction, it's going to pack down more and be a tighter, tighter rug. If you go over it again and have a herringbone effect, it's going to be a looser weave. So I'm actually going to go under mine because I want it to go in the same direction. So all you do is just lift it up and go under instead of instead of dropping it and going over. And again, you want to pack it down good. Now, both of the methods are right, and that's one way you get your patterns in twining is the direction of the twist and also how you change your colors. Now, you can do this with two different colors. You can have two different color weaving just like you do on the cinch weaves. It doesn't really want to sit on my pillow, but I just need it up here so you can see it. I, I do from the bottom up, and then I turn it over and I weave again from the bottom up, and I end my weaving in the middle of the rug. Now when you get to the middle of the rug, it's going to be tight and your space is going to get smaller and smaller. So just get in as many rows as you can, and a crochet hook works good to get those last few, few rows in. And then when you finish and you can't get any more rows in, you need to tie your two strands in a knot and then just pull the ends through or put them on a needle if you have a big enough eye and pull those ends through up and down so that they're hidden. And you shouldn't be able to see where you ended your weaving at all. So you can see now how it's beginning to separate the warps and you can see a lot better what you're doing here. So I'm going to weave this color for little ways and then I'm going to turn my loom over and weave the same color from the opposite end. And then I'm going to change colors, weave some different colors in here. I have more of the sheets left so I'm going to weave some white rows in. And, and when I get ready to change my color, all I'm going to do is when I splice on another piece, I'm going to splice on the other color. And it doesn't matter where I splice it on, whether it's in the middle or the ends, or it doesn't matter. So wherever you splice it on, that'll be fine. It won't show. Besides sheets, you can also use tablecloths, curtains, anything. And the longer the strips, the easier it is. And depending on the thickness of the fabric, you know, if the fabric is thicker, then you want to cut your strips a little bit narrower. If the fabric is thinner, then cut them wider. But I just kind of use an inch and a half as a rule of thumb. By the way, the way this is a good project for youngsters. They probably need help weave, um, warping, but uh, when it comes to the weaving process, kids are great at adapting to this method. Kids are also great at doing the twined bags, if you've caught any of the twined bags videos, because you just go round and round, and kids are great about just weaving around and around. Because you're doing two strands across, two strands of, of weft, it makes it double thick. So. I really like the way they turn out, nice thick rugs. So 
So I'm about down to my other end. And again, remember, don't pull tight. Oops. Okay, now I'm down to my other end where I tied my knot. So now that I've gone around one time separating them, from now on I'm going to actually hold the two of them together. You have to go through them the first time so that when you take your weaving off that warp doesn't slip out. But after the first row then you can actually hold those two together and go around them together. So remember you want both of your strands to go around that outside warp. So the back one comes forward and the forward one goes all the way around those actually it's two warps at that time. So now we're going to go back to going over when I go left to right. So make your ends over here snug, but don't get them so tight that it pulls it in. Okay, continue to pack it down firmly, but don't pull sideways. So continue in this manner to get a little ways up, turn it over and do the other end so that you meet in the middle. And I'll, I'm going to weave a little bit and I'll catch you in a few minutes. So I have been weaving on this end for a while and I've also been weaving at this end. Now I switched to two color weaving so you can see I'm using one strand of white and one strand of the print simply because I don't have a whole lot of the print material. But you can see because you have an odd number of warps, if you do two color, your white turns out on alternate warps, so it gives you this diagonal effect, a twill effect. If you are doing it so that your uh, rows are all going in the same direction. If you're doing it so they go in the herringbone look, it gives you a completely different look to your weaving. So depending on whether you do your right to left under or over, it gives you this different look. Now if you want the white to come over the same warp each row, then at the edge you can make a full turn and that brings the same color up over the warp. You can also note that as you get a few rows on, you can see how it separates your warp so you can see them a whole lot easier. So I'm going to weave on this end for a while and then I'll turn it over and weave on the other end for a while. And I'm going to switch colors here pretty soon and just do a little bit of white in here. And then see if I can find some more print to do something else in the middle. All right, try to get as many rows in as possible. And then when you get to the very middle, make sure you tie your ends together and then and tie them in a knot and then run them up through along the warp. You can use a crochet hook or, or something to just poke them through and uh, so you cover your ends. Then you're ready to just pull it off your loom and you're finished. So happy weaving and enjoy your product.